Hi everyone and welcome to episode 108 of the Talk is Cheap show, our fourth show of 2022 so far. We've got another great show lined up for you today, but before we get started in earnest, allow me to introduce my two special guests. First up, a man who graces us with his presence each week. A man who is never false, but always positive. A man who is the very epitome of the saying, seek not greatness, but seek truth and you shall find both. Ladies and gentlemen, my good friend, my co-host, my resident expert, show analyst, former professional footballer, now social media content producer of much renown. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, please give a big digital welcome to Curtis Shaw of Curtis Shaw TV in the house. What are you saying, bro? Yo, yo, yo. Pleasure to be here, bro. Yo, them intros, man, every week. I don't know how you get through them. Like, one take as well, you know. But nah, big up, Laurie. Big up, Drifty. Happy to be here, man. Thanks, bro. It's only what you deserve. And <laughs> that notwithstanding, we've got another special guest in the house, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, please put your hands together and please give a big digital round of applause for a man who I'm privileged to be able to call a friend. He's the only man I know who can host a football podcast inside his own house wearing shades and still pull it off and get taken seriously. He actually took the ferry across the Mersey to be here today and end up in London. He's known for his dry humour, his intelligent insights and his opinions on the game. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is my deep pleasure to be able to introduce to you today Drifty of Coppish TV in the house. What are you saying, bro? Big up, man. Pleasure to be here, man. That is definitely the best intro I've ever had, so I like that, bro. I like that. <laughs> Nothing less than you deserve, bro. Before we and get started... I was started, in mourning uh... when I had them glasses on. I was in mourning. <laughs> I didn't want anyone to see my eyes because I was that vet, bro. <laughs> I think you're one of the very few that could have pulled that off, bro. Trust me. Um, <laughs> no, big up, man. But before we get started in earnest, um, you were uh, a bit of a unique position there, aren't you? Because you're a London lad living in London, supporting a team like Liverpool. You're not the only one by a long way, but you got your channel. So I was just going to ask you briefly to tell us a little bit about how you first started supporting Liverpool and how you started your channel. Just very briefly. Just yeah, so yeah. Um, where you, where you are. Uh, in terms of supporting Liverpool... Um, I was just a young buck, loved football, always used to get my dad to take me to the park. And then I just reached that age, about maybe six or seven, when I realised, you know, it's time to support a club. If I love football, then I need to support a club. And um, because my dad used to love watching John Barnes, uh, he didn't have an affiliation to Liverpool, he had an affiliation to Barnes. So he just watched them. And then, you know, as a kid, you don't realise players go all over the place. You just think that guy played for that team, and it? So, you know, fell in love with Barnes, loved watching Barnes as, as a kid. He was at the tail end of his career, obviously. I didn't see him in his heyday, but he was still John Barnes, innit? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, obviously, as I got a little bit older, the love just grew for Liverpool with Barnes. And then, yeah, before I knew it, I was in love with uh, with Liverpool, and it was, it was the drug I didn't know I was taking. I'd never be able to stop, let's put it that way. See, and a little bit about Coppish TV. Um, yeah, well, we used to be uh, we used to be a uh, the football banner show before we before we rebranded into Coppish. We used to talk about all football clubs, um, and uh, we had different members back then. There was a couple of other people involved, um, and then when uh, Callum came on board, when we brought Callum in, who, who's obviously um, uh, it's me, Callum and Matt now. We thought, you know, I just, I just sat uh, Matt down and I was like, bro, when we bring Callum in, we should rebrand and just go into a Liverpool channel now because, you know, we don't have anybody in, the, in, in our midst that isn't a Liverpool fan now, whereas we did before. So why don't we just talk about who we love? You know what I mean? And I don't, the reason we got started in the first place was the love of football. I just sat down with a couple of my friends and said, guys, I want to start a, a, a YouTube channel and just talk just talk football because we do it all the time. We used to do it back in the day when we used to play computer together till three, four, five in the morning. And it was just fun even being involved in the conversation. I thought other people will find this joke. Like they will, do you know what I mean? So, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's just grown from doing something, idea, executing the idea. And now here we are. I mean, you lot know already what you lot have built at TV is sensational. So you lot already know, you know, how you can take something so small and it can just become this big thing out of nowhere. And I'm just humbled by it, man. I just, I can't believe people even care what I have to say about football. So I'll never take for granted what we've got. Hopefully we keep going. We're on the road to 50,000 now. So 
yeah, man, it's, it's, it's beautiful, man. I really, really enjoy it. And it's therapy. I don't know about you lot, but sometimes it's the only way to be sane. If I get to talk yeah. about it for two hours, I can get it out of my system a bit. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? I don't know Curtis is emotional like me. Do you know what I mean? Now, when, when I watch Curtis, I'm like, yeah, this, this is how I feel. It's just thankfully I haven't been that angry that much in the last few years. But yeah, yeah, yeah. back in the day, I was probably worse than Curtis. So yeah, man, it's, it's therapy for me, man. Oh you're, oh, you're lucky you weren't on YouTube when you had like Roy Evans and and, and oh, uh, no, Roy Hodgson, imagine. sorry, and then man there, you know what I mean? Roy Hodgson. Can you imagine? Yeah. I would have probably had a heart attack on screen, bro, because I wouldn't be able to take that stress, bro. Not yeah. Hodgson. <laughs> awesome, <man. Yo. laughs> well, well, I watch your content, man, and um, I can vouch for you, man. It's real good stuff. Very entertaining. Like I said in your introduction, that, you provide some very intelligent insights and manage to keep the humour going as well, which is what it's all about, bro. And I actually yeah, uh, came on your channel last week to preview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, that was, that was, and, man, that was great fun. fun. So shout out to you for that, bro. People, well, what yeah, you listen, man, Thanks for that. And um, <laughs> everybody watching, you know where you know where to find Drifty when you want. Okay then, so um, moving on. Um, so as Curtis would tell you, um, normally our first big segment of the show after the introductions would be to review Arsenal's last game since the last show. But of course there was no last game. Um, it was the North London derby that never was. Um, we found out less than 24 hours before the game was to go ahead that it was going to get called off, which was controversial to say the least. And um, it's fair to say that a lot of people were very critical of Arsenal. There's a lot of acrimony out there. Um, social media, well, it just exploded, didn't it, Curtis, with the amount of criticism we were getting. And, um, and let's be honest, I'm going to be honest as an Arsenal fan. Some of it is understandable because many Arsenal fans, and I'm going to include myself in this as well, was very critical of Liverpool when they did that to us, when they did a similar thing to us. Um, so yeah. it was only natural that we were going to cop it, you know what I mean? No pun intended. But... Um, <laughs> Yeah, so we got it, man. Last weekend, we got a lot of stick. A lot of people were saying that Arsenal were guilty of hypocrisy. Other people were saying that we flat out cheating. Some people were saying we were running scared of Spurs. So, yeah, people were going in, man. Um, so I'm going to ask Drifty, he's our special guest, mm. and I'm going to ask him what he thinks of that situation and the whole sort of atmosphere around postponing games. What's his thoughts on that? So, um, as uh, a special guest, I'll let you kick it off. With regards to the Arsenal North London uh, situ derby situation, that's like mob deep settings, isn't it? Shook ones part three. Um, <laughs> 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 I mean, you can you spell irony? Like <laughs> we. <laughs> Oh, my days. The abuse that we were getting from Arsenal fans. And you know what? To be fair, you lot were jigging on other fans as well. I had Chelsea fans coming at me and Man U fans coming at me and all this. And I'm like, wow, well, what have Arsenal fans started here? Like, we're getting beefed from everyone. Like, we just had 13 cases and we were trying to figure out how to deal with it. And it's like, all of a sudden, everyone's just coming down on us. So when I heard that Arsenal were doing the same thing, I thought, rah, you just, you can't write this. You, you can't write this. And you know what? This is just another chapter for that Amazon uh, documentary you lot are filming, isn't it? Like, <laughs> insert irony right here. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Hypocrisy yeah. 101. But um, I, the thing that I find kind of weird, though, was you were saying, how do I feel about the authorities? I'm not going to lie, guys. We had an independent tester come in, and maybe they just had a bad batch of, of tests at the time. I know it really it does sound far-fetched, but there have been times apparently when it's happened before, just, uh, just not on that scale where the test, the, the actual tests themselves are bad. So they're giving bad results. And you know what it's like. You just have to go and do protocol. And that was shut the, the training ground down. Do we have a pandemic happening within our club? We got to sort this out. And we just asked if the game could be cancelled in case all those cases were true. But with you guys, the fact there's only one actual covid case right and this is injuries and afcon that you that have put forward in your proposal to having the game cancelled i'm really baffled how the premier league who i do believe are the real problem i'm going to take quite a lot of the pressure off arsenal to be fair and say it's the rules the premier league have put in or whatever it is that don't make any sense and they're the ones who do need to, to answer for this because it's just weird but arsenal have found a loophole where you can get a game cancelled through injuries I've never, this is weird. Like, this is, 
I think you lot took it a step too far. Like, I think you lot, it's never like you lot pretended you had some COVID cases. You lot just like, yeah, we just ain't got our best players available. We're not going to. And you know what's mad? The day you asked for the game to be cancelled, your under 23s play the game. So the under 23s are all fine. There's nothing wrong with them. You loaned players out the day before, and then you loaned Pablo Mari out the day after they said, yeah, you can postpone it. You lot are gangsters. I just got to rate it, innit? I've got, I've got to rate it. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to rate it. <laughs> oh, my day. Yeah. Well, there you have it, people. That's how the other clubs are viewing us. Right, <laughs> now I'm going to give um, Curtis the right to reply on behalf of all Arsenal fans, um, which is difficult because, listen, some people are going to have different points of view over this. But, Curtis, my man, you're, you're here and you have to defend Arsenal's honour. How are you going to do that, bro? Do you know what, man? There was, there was a Premier League party going off. We weren't invited, man. We turned up late, kicked the door down and came in. You know what I mean? You lot was all <laughs> locking games off. Arsenal said, listen, man, North London derby. Xhaka got the red card. Listen, no, nah, but in all seriousness, man, I, I, I don't believe that clubs should just be, you know, calling games off like that because, you know, it, it kind of compromises the league a little bit. You know, if a game was supposed to happen in January, gets called off, you play them in February, that team might assign two players who win mm. them that game that wouldn't have. But as we said, man, the Premier League have not put the rules in place properly. You know, Micah Richards said it. This is a Premier League issue, not an Arsenal issue. I think the reason Arsenal fans have acted so shamelessly, well, I'm speaking for myself, is because when it happened to Arsenal, the whole industry went crazy. Gary Neville was almost in tears on TV. Oh, I can't believe Arsenal have done this. And I'm like, bro, this has been happening for the past six weeks. Yeah, yeah. You need to look at the bigger issue. But no, nah, listen, I think they need to put rules in place. Um, like you were saying before, Drifty, you know, maybe we should have actually played Tottenham because they had no Son, no Romero. They're not playing well. Mm. Um, and maybe even with a, with players missing, we might have beat them. But um, it is what it is. You know, it's one of them, it? and um, I'm sure it will keep happening, man. Game's getting called off every week at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, guys. I mean, for the record, I'm just going to keep it brief and say, listen, um, I'm trying hard not to be hypocritical, but what I say probably is going to sound hypocritical. But what I would qualify it by saying this. Previously, and, you know, and even now, I'm not in favour of games being cancelled. I would have preferred to have played last week's game against Tottenham, win, lose or draw. I would have preferred the game to go ahead. Um, I think if we really wanted to, we could have put a team out there. But hey, I don't know that for sure. So maybe that's, you know, maybe I'm jumping the gun. But anyway, I will prefer the games to be played. However, I don't blame Arsenal for doing what they did because it seems like it's just open season on postponements. So you could almost argue that if Arsenal didn't do that, last week, when they found themselves threadbare, then they were guilty of being naive and being, you know I mean, a bit silly, really. Um, so I can understand why they did that. Not that I necessarily agree with it. And I would just like to make the point very quickly that I think I agree with you guys. And I also think that the Premier League have got to get their house in order on this one, because the whole integrity of the league is... Um, is in question if this is allowed to carry on. And you can you imagine when you get to the real business end of the, of the season, if this kind of stuff is still going on, it could be games that could determine, you know I mean, relegation or um, Champions League places. And then what happens? You're going to get lawyers, teams filing lawsuits and lawyers getting involved. So, um, yeah, man. This game, think about it, guys. Say this game couldn't be played until March or April due to fixture pileup. It would... Basically, it could be the end of the season. It could be you lot for top four. It could be the winner gets top yeah, four, isn't it? Absolutely. So, yeah, you know what I mean? They're going to have to sort this one out. So, But, yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks for your opinions on that. Okay, moving on then um, to a game that hopefully will go ahead, although there was some conjecture earlier in the week that it might. But um, yeah, Apparently, you're trying to get this one called off as well, boys. <laughs> <laughs> well, the latest that we're hearing is that it definitely will go ahead. I mean, come on, man. Let's hope it does go ahead, man. Enough. Enough of this. No, you know what? Cancel away, boys. Cancel away. Egypt, the one game away from getting knocked out of the group, and we'll have Salah back. Cancel away, boys. <laughs> <laughs> you see, this is a problem, yeah. isn't it? Um, you know what I mean? A whole can of worms has been opened, man. A whole monster's been created around this. So, they, yeah. they, like I said, man, uh, like you guys both said, the Premier League is their problem. They need to get to grips with it because 
if you allow rules where people can manipulate them at will, human nature suggests that's exactly what they're going to do. But mm. again, focusing on the game that should happen. Um, it's a big game. Arsenal versus Liverpool games are always big games. Um, this one, second leg semi-final of the Carabao Cup. Very important competition in my view. Um, first leg was nil-nil. Obviously, we know that Granit Xhaka got sent off, so Arsenal were forced to defend for very large spells in that game. We managed to come through with a creditable nil-nil. Um, but Thursday is a massive game. Start with Drifty, he's our special guest. What's your initial thoughts on this game, bro? Uh, I you know what? It's not later, but just your initial thoughts. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll be honest with you. I definitely feel a little apprehensive about going to the Emirates with us having a weakened squad, even if you have a weakened squad, because Arsenal will always play well against Liverpool or the Emirates. And to be fair to you, taking all the banter aside, I don't really think anybody ever mugs you off at home. I always think it's on your travels where you get all your beatings and, and, and stuff like that. At <laughs> home, you're pretty much... <laughs> no, but at home, you're pretty much... I think the only time I've ever seen you not play at home and really play poorly was in that Bayern Munich double tie that you had maybe four or five years back. Under right, no, we don't, we don't, we don't talk home, about them games yeah. anymore, Drifty. Oh, we don't, okay, we okay. forgot that. Fair enough. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> um, but yeah, other than that, you don't really perform poorly at home. So I'm never really that, like, confident about going to the Emirates, no matter how well we're playing, because I know you've even, you've got a couple of draws against us in, in seasons where we've been champion, or we've won the Premier League or whatever, and you lot still managed to play well at home, so I am a little apprehensive about going to the Emirates for this game, especially that we haven't got a goal advantage, and especially that there's no extra time, um, there's no uh, away goal rules from this season onwards as well, so it's not like, like if you if you got the nil-nil draw that you did, and then I knew we just got to get one and you lot got to get two because we've got the away goal. All of a sudden, it makes it advantage to us, doesn't it? And little things like that. But that isn't there anymore now. So if we're going to win the game, we've actually got to beat you away. Like, you've got to lose the home game for us to go through. And that's not going to be easy with half of our squad missing. So I'm apprehensive. I'll be honest. You know what I mean? We can put the banter in and stuff, and I love doing all that. But you put that all to one side, and I think Arsenal at home have to be taken seriously enough that I'm not just going to act like this is a game we're going to win. You know what I mean? And how big a game? I mean, we said it is a big game. It's obviously a big game, semi-final of a major competition. But in terms of, for Liverpool, uh, their overall priorities, how does that fit in? I mean, obviously, you're in the championship. Yeah, we, we've got to win a trophy. We've yeah. got to win a trophy. We've got our best ever manager in Premier League history. And we've got one of the best managers to ever do it. And he's going to walk away with a third of what he should have won. From poor ownership. I won't go into that. You lot know what it's like to have poor owners. But our ownership is really, really bad. You know what I mean? They run an amazing business, but they don't run a great football club. Do you know what I mean? We, yeah. football, we don't care about how much profit you make and all that. We just care who's on the pitch. And when I'm seeing an 18-year-old, no, a 17-year-old in Kai Gordon being the one who's touted as Salah's replacement, I'm like, yeah, there's a problem here, isn't it? There's a, there's a real problem here at this club. So, it's a priority for us to win trophies under clock, and it might not be the priority trophy, but it would still be very nice for him to add a trophy to the ones he's already won. I know we have other trophies we can win that are much bigger, but I'm not going to front. I want this one. Once you get to a semi-final, you're closer than you can be to anything, isn't it? Let's be real. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we're not going to win the league. Champions League, we've got a chance of winning, but it's going to be difficult. And the FA Cup, we've got a chance of winning, but it's going to be difficult. So now we're in the semi-final. The final will be difficult is Chelsea. But I want to be there. You can't yeah. win it unless you're there. Absolutely. So I, be I believe it's more important to you guys, but it's still important to us. I'm going to be real. Okay, thank you very much. Moving on to Curtis. A um, couple of questions in there, bro. Um, the first one is this game coming up against Liverpool, massive game. Your initial thoughts on the game, and I also want you to include in your answer, how big a game is it for us? Is it bigger for us than it is for them, as Drifty suggested? What are you saying, bro? No, I think it's definitely bigger for us because the reality is we can only win one trophy this season, which is this, um, where I still think Liverpool have got a chance of winning the Champions League. I think over over two legs, I still think they can beat, you know, the majority of teams in Europe. Um, and, and let's face it, winning a trophy is the thing that has kept Arteta in the job. That FA Cup win prolonged his stay. I think he would have been gone without that. 
I think it's a bit of a a 50-50 game. Uh, some people saying we're favourites. Um, I think because of home advantage, you could say that. I think a lot will depend on who we've got available. We're not going to have two um, centre midfielders fit um, because obviously two are at AFCON, one suspended. So we're going to have to play maybe a number 10 in the middle of midfield. You know, Liverpool got Fabinho and people like that. It's going to be difficult. Um but like you said, we have got a good record against Liverpool at home. I always kind of feel like we can get something against Liverpool at home. I don't know why, but um, so, uh, you know, it's a bit 50-50 this one, to be honest. I wouldn't be surprised if it went to extra time. It's one of them games, really. Mm. Um, but I think it's a big game. It, it's Reasonable. interesting because I've almost felt like Klopp has been trying to get knocked out of this competition. Sometimes I look at your team lineup, I'm like... Yeah, I'd ever recognise these man. He must want to go out, but then once you get to the semi-final, you think, mm. you know what? Win this, and you're at Wembley. So, I think it's a big game. It is a, it big, is a game. big game. It's a big confidence. And interestingly, there you spoke about team lineups because that was going to be my next question. So we said it's a big game, massive game, especially for Arsenal, um, but it is a big game for both teams. Now, drifty. Uh, mm. So you alluded to it's a big game. So presumably you're going to go strong. Are you able to give us an idea of what type of team you're going to play on Thursday? I can give you who I think will be available. But yeah. obviously everything could change because obviously yeah. we're, we're recording this a few days before. Um, right. We've got our full back line available from what I'm aware of as of today. So Trent, and Robertson will probably play. Could be Simakas, but it'll probably be, be Robertson. So they'll be our fullbacks. And I think he probably will go Van Dijk and Matic. But if he's going to change one, it'll be uh, Ibu for either one. So it'll either be Van Dijk and Ibu, or Ibu and Matic, or Matic and Van Dijk. It, it'll be one of those one of those variations. Um, and then Alisson will play in goal. I don't think he'll go with our backup goalie. I think he will play Alisson. He played Alisson in the first leg. I don't see why he won't play him in the second Midfield, I think he will go with Fabinho. We've got to have that. Um, we've got to have that kind of controller in there. And then this is where it gets interesting from this moment on. Ox picked up an injury after playing well at the weekend. He rolled his ankle, so the poor boy is out for about three or four weeks now. We all know Ox's injuries can turn into months. So I'm actually worried about it. Um, and he's been playing well for us this season. I don't know if he's going to be adventurous or if he's going to be shook himself. Because when he plays Henderson and Milner, for me, that's him saying, look, I'm a little worried about the opposition's attack, so I'm just going to put these guys in there who have got the legs, the energy, the mentality, to keep in shape, be defensive, and stop anything coming through, which works. But what it does is it means we have no creativity to go and attack the opposition. Do you get what I mean? And the thing that's worrying me is, is that if we're playing you guys, and you lot maybe say score first, and you've got home of artists, the crowd's behind you, and you're all up for it, and you lot are feeling good. We've got no creativity in the middle. We couldn't even break you down at Anfield. Are we going to break you down at the Emirates? Do you get what I mean? So there's that part of me that's thinking, please, Klopp, I get it, we're away from home. Don't be silly, don't be gung-ho, but just be a little bit more adventurous. Play Curtis Jones in the midfield um, with Henderson rather than Milner. To have a player who likes to carry the ball, likes to run, has a bit of creativity, can pop a shot from 20 yards if if the opportunity arises, do you know what I mean? And and just be a little bit more adventurous. I really, really hope he doesn't go with Milner and Henderson again. But, but I know my manager and he's got it. So it's going to be Henderson, Milner and, and Fabinho in midfield. And then he's going to probably go Minamino on the right, Jota on the left and Firmino up front. So it's probably going to be almost identical to the team that played. I don't know if you lot saw a game against Brentford at the weekend. But That's pretty so much that with our Brentford team at the weekend. Mm. Although they did do very well against Brentford in the end. Yeah, in the end we did. In the yeah. end, we huffed and puffed in the first half, and then yeah, we managed to get three goals in the end. But Brentford are in a bit of bad form, so I'm trying not to get over positive. Southampton mm. put four past them last week, so it's not like they're playing well at the moment. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, it's, 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 okay. that, that, I'm, that's a bit of a false positive there for, for yeah. another <laughs> one. It's not the another first one, one you've had. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Curtis, uh, you've heard what Drifty's had to say about mm. team wise. Um, obviously, they're going to go as strong as they can within yeah. reason, within what they've got available. And I guess it's the same for us. But um, 
if you're the manager tomorrow, who do you go with for Arsenal? I think Ramsdale will be in goal. Um, the back four, I mean, Tommy Asso hasn't played the last two or three games, so whether he's available, um, it'll be Chambers. If not, I would imagine. But Tommy Asu, Tierney, Gabriel, Ben White. The midfield will be La Conga. I mean, I just don't know who he's going to play next to him because we don't have anyone. Um, I know against Man City away, he played Odegaard in, in midfield. So just for that reason, that's the only option I can really think of, that he plays Odegaard next to La Conga and then Smith Rowe just in front of him in the 10. Martinelli left, Saka right, Lacazette up front. You know, I, I do not want to see Eddie and Ketia against Van Dijk ever again. You know, it just it's a mismatch that isn't going to work. But obviously, that's assuming all these players are available. Smith Rowe, Tommy Asu, they've both been injured. Odegaard's had COVID. I don't know if he's actually back. Um, so it could be something completely different to that. But assuming those three are back, that's that's all we can really go with. Right. Okay. So really, on paper, then it is quite even, really, isn't it? If you balance it out. Yeah, because I suppose we're we're only if that team was out, we'd only be missing. Well, I suppose two midfielders we would change. Mm -hmm. Liverpool would change. Um, their two wingers obviously would come in. So in terms of numbers, we're Nabi not too different. Be, oh, Nabi would now be playing midfield for you. Yeah, yeah. So three players for you. Um, so <clears> not too much difference, but obviously they're big players that we're missing that make a big difference. You take part out of our midfield. It's just not the same. You take Salah and Mane out of Liverpool, you know, it's good, but it's not, they're not the superstars who are left. But obviously, there's still enough danger there. But I just think Arsenal have got to take heart from the fact we kept that team out for 70 minutes with 10 men. If we can take the lead, you know, I think it gives us a chance. Obviously, if Liverpool take the lead, it's, it's a problem. But I think, I think we've got to have a go at Liverpool. Yeah, you, 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 so you know what's what what's really worked in any team's favour that's playing us now is when we thought we was going to lose Naby or um Naby Moa and, and Sadio, we was like, well, let's just hope everybody else is available when they go. And yeah. the real real issue for us is is that arigi has been injured now, who would have been the ideal replacement and would have was scored yeah. goals, and Tiago's still injured, so we don't have Tiago in midfield. So it's not it's 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 like ah. Uh, because you're looking at, and, and even Minamino missed the first game, I feel like he, he's okay now, but even he was injured at first. So it's like the guys who were meant to come in when they go, even they're not available. So that's what's kind of messed us up a bit. If Origi was playing in the first, like I reckon we would have scored. Do you know what I mean? It, but it was having Minamino and Firmino up front, and Firmino was just back from injury. So he's not even up to speed. So it was just like there's no impetus up. Do you know what I mean? So it's just, there's injuries and few things and, and now you lot are a week rested as well which worries me because you've had a whole week to train you didn't have any game to worry about for whatever the reason that was as we've already discussed so you lot are all fresh and rested yeah, but the training ground was closed apparently <laughs> <laughs> what yours? No, it wasn't. <laughs> you had the 23 plays, man. <laughs> uh, uh, right. Okay. So, but Given what both of you have said there, both teams are, you know, I mean, let's let's be honest, the both teams are kind of affected in the same kind of ways. Um, mm. And it sounds kind of level pegging in terms of personnel available. You know, in other words, we're both missing key players and key positions. It kind of balances itself out. Where I feel that Arsenal have the slight edge, obviously the second leg being at home, and we've gone to Liverpool previously and got away with a nil-nil draw. So I think... If I was a betting man, you'd have to make Arsenal favourite. But I'm going to ask now, Drifty, who wins and why? Who, who goes home into the final and why? I think home advantage is just going to get you like, over the line. I do. Mm. I feel like our lack of goal threat combined with you being at home, I think it's just going to tip the game in your favour. And I'd probably say... Maybe towards the end of the game, you might snatch it or maybe an extra time. If it goes to penalties, it could favour us because we've got some very good penalty takers in our team. But again, penalties is still a lottery and I don't know how good your penalty takers are. Maybe they are good. Odegaard, I'm guessing, must be good at penalties and whatnot. So I don't know if it goes to penalties, but I just get the feeling you might sneak it in open play 
in in the normal time or the extra time. I just given, got a little given, bit. Given who we've got available, who are you as a Liverpool fan kind of worried about? Who do you? What dangers do you see at this this team? Here? Um, Sack is always a, is always dangerous. Um, I think he is. You lot aren't gonna like me saying this. I think he's overhyped, but I still think he's very good. If that makes sense, I just think yeah. Arsenal fans act like he's Lionel Messi, and I'm like, ah, right, bring it back, bring it back. <laughs> but obviously, he is very good. Uh, Martinelli, I like Martinelli uh, as an outsider looking in. I think Martinelli's your best youngster. Maybe you lot disagree with me, but I really like Martinelli. I think he's good. No, I no. Think he has no, no, well, it's just, um, you know, you're being honest and forthright. That's what we like. Yeah, yeah I like that. That's, I what like you feel. That's what you feel. Yeah. So I'd be worried. I'm worried about him, obviously, because because he has got the he has got a goal in him. He's quick. He, he works hard and stuff like that. Um, and then obviously the fact that you've got your your centre back pairing back together. I was a lot happier when I thought it might be Pablo Mari or one of them boys playing instead of Gabriel, because White and Gabriel play well together as a two. They might not be amazing defenders, but they still play very well as a partnership. So I feel like you're going to defend well, and I feel like you could. I mean. Like I said, I'm not going to lie. The guy ain't great, but he can score goals, isn't it? So if you set him up, he can still put him in the net. So you've still got some danger in there. We've, I'm glad we've got our main defence, but we play a high line. Shaq is quick. Martinelli's quick. So, you know, we always leave ourselves a bit vulnerable with the high line. Um, but remember, you guys got in once at Anfield when Saka had that chance because we played such a high line and you just broke quickly and the pace of Saka you got in. Yeah, I, God, boys, I don't know. I don't know what Liverpool's going to play right now. In the last couple of games, we've been so up and down with our form. Like, I don't know. I really don't know. I think the Brentford win was the first win in the Premier League for a month, if you can believe that, for a team in the title race. I mean, that's why we're not in the title race anymore. Mm. But, mm. yeah, we, I don't know. We're up and down at the moment. I really don't. I don't know what Liverpool's going to show up. I just, yeah. we, we could come there and just be full of confidence and get a goal early and be like, well, OK, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what Liverpool Yeah, I mean, the, the, uh, the approach of Klopp and Liverpool is going to be interesting to see. That first 5, 10, 15 minutes will probably tell us a lot about how this game is going to pan out. But over yeah. to Curtis, my man. Um, same question to you that I asked Drifty. Who wins and why? There's got to be a winner in this game. There will be no draw because if there's a draw in normal time, mm. they got extra time penalties. So who's going to emerge out of this game as the opponents of Chelsea in the final? I mean, do you know what? Drifty's got me like, I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, yo, he's leading me down a path here, you know what I mean? Making me think, giving us loads of confidence, you know. Another but, false positive there. Yeah, another false positive. But do, do, do you know what? I think... Um, do you know what? I think naturally, whatever team you support, you're a little bit more apprehensive because like, I'm seeing the dangers in Liverpool and you're seeing the dangers in Arsenal because I'm just thinking, you know, that midfield that we have out is going to have a tough night on his hands, you know, even if it is Henderson, Milner, Fabinho, you know, Curtis Jones, it's, we are short in midfield. Lukonga is new to this country. I don't know who's going to play next to him. Um, so it is going to be difficult. It is going to be tough. Where I've got a little bit of confidence, I feel like we can stop your attack a little bit. Where when when Mane and Salah are playing, it's like, boy, man, you got a long night at the office. But I am going to back Arsenal and say that I think we can win with home advantage. I, I do think we've got a goal in us. Um, we should have actually scored against Liverpool, even with ten men. You know, Saka was in, should have lifted it over Allison and probably scored. Um, and, and like I said, I think we really need to win this competition where I still think Liverpool can win a trophy elsewhere. Um, so, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm going to just favour Arsenal. I think the home advantage makes the difference. And, and I think, like you said, because we didn't play at the weekend, I think we'll have a few more, you know, a bit more energy in the legs, uh, especially if the game was to go to extra time. So, Give us just a score, an man. Arsenal win. Just an Arsenal win. Scrape Give us it. a score. I'll go for two one, which is like the safety score in it. You know, I can I can see both teams scoring, but um, I think we'll nick it two one towards the end. And uh, same question to you that I asked Drifty, uh, my supplementary question to the original one, which is looking at Liverpool. Um, you've heard what Drift, the likely team that Drifty's spoken about. Who do you yeah. see out of them as their chief threats? 
Um, I mean, it's interesting that, like, when you look at Liverpool, you think about the fullbacks who are, you know, are in the back four, but that's how influential they are. Um, obviously, Firmino, Firmino's got a great record against Arsenal, like, always seems to have worldies against us. Um, I know last week he wasn't fully at it, but I know he's just come back from injury. So, I'd say Firmino and, and the fullbacks, Jota as well, Jota's had a good record against us. I think he scored a few times for Wolves and then Mm. Scored for Liverpool. So listen, they they've got quality all over that we're gonna have to have to deal with. Um but you know, if we can keep them out, we give ourselves a chance. Mm. Okay. I must say, um, there's one man that I'm looking at. Liverpool obviously full of very good players, but there's one man I'm looking at tomorrow with some trepidation. Sorry, Thursday, and that is uh Oxley Chamberlain. I'll just get that impression, you know what I mean? that he's going to relish this game and he's probably going to... On his day, man, he's a very, very good player. And um, he likes he to... He'll probably miss the game, though, bro, because he rolled his ankle at the weekend and we haven't had an update on him, but the, I've oh, heard I two or three weeks. Well, I would so, never uh, wish injury on anyone, but um, if he doesn't play, um, i would take that because if he does play, I could see him, you know what I mean, causing us problems. Yeah. yeah. I like he would have been fired up for it, one not he, as yeah, well, at the Emirates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's an He's interesting... A powerful runner, and that's what I feel like would have helped us in this game against you lot, having a powerful runner. And he's been, yeah. I mean, a lot of people in the Liverpool fan base scapegoating when we don't win, and I don't like it. I always stick up for him because I feel like it's very unfair to just keep on picking out the one guy that's not really your favourite and go, well, no, he didn't play great. Because sometimes I'm like, guys, he, he had a good game. What we what we talking about here? Like, mm -hmm. he played well. Mm -hmm. I think if he doesn't score, people say he didn't have a good game because he's an advanced midfielder. So they feel like that. If he doesn't score, he didn't do his job. But yeah, yeah man, I like Ox. And I think he would have been good in this game. Yeah. But yeah, He is a good player with a very good attitude. And as mm, yeah. Curtis said, quite rightly, he'll be mega fired up. And, um, well, you can imagine how he will in, cement his reputation with the Liverpool fans if he's instrumental in a win against Arsenal at the Emirates in such a big game. But anyway, thanks for that, guys. With me, um, you may be surprised to hear this, uh, <laughs> Drifty, but I'm leaning towards Arsenal. few reasons for that. Obviously, we spoke about the home advantage. Uh, you got some key players out. Um, and I just think that the momentum from that first game of us getting the draw there, now we've got you back at our place. I think that those things, and you said yourself that although you won against Brentford at the weekend, your form has been a bit capricious, and it? it's been a bit up and down. Yeah, yeah. Very Leaning well. towards Arsenal, um, and let's be honest, um, and this is no knock on Liverpool because we need this a bit more, don't we? I would say so. Yeah, we need this yeah. game more than you do. You, I, I, I think. I, do, I think the one final thing for Arsenal, a lot will depend on that team selection. You know. We haven't heard this injury update yet. If if we start seeing holding chambers, players like that playing, then this prediction goes out the window. I'm assuming that Smith Rowe, Odegaard, and Tommy Asu are going to have recovered, you know. So a lot will depend on that team line. Or it may be that they've recovered, but they're not fully fit, you see. Oh, yeah. Where, yeah. where the manager's kind of forced to chuck them in there, even though he knows they're not 100% ready. I yeah. think with Tommy Yasu, that might be the case because there was talk yeah, yeah. that he might have played on Sunday if we had played Tottenham. Um, but then that would have been a case of patching guys up and getting them out there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I still think that all things being equal, I think that Arsenal do have a slight advantage um, and we hope they win. And when they do win, <laughs> <laughs> I get through to the final. Um, there's another game to look forward to at the weekend. Um and we'll talk about your game in a minute, Drifty. But um, Arsenal versus Burnley at the weekend, Curtis. Yeah. Uh, listen, man, um, no disrespect, man, but it's a game that Arsenal should win, no matter who we put out, really. <laughs> I know that sounds like... <laughs> Yeah, I don't I mean... think we need to call that game off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I think that's a very good point you make there. I mean, Burnley... Currently bottom of the Premier League, man. I mean, 11 points. Mm. Um, they have played Newcastle 17 games. So they've played best well. Yeah, yeah Chris just Wood Chris, just gone. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they've only won one game this season. That was against Brent. That was back in October against Brentford. Yeah. Um, so I think it's fair to say, man, that they're deep in relegation trouble. Um, and as Drifty said there, they've sold their best player. So things are looking kind of bleak for them. Um, 
Last season, we uh, we beat them at home, but we also drew with them. And overall, our record against Burnley is very good. I think we've only lost once in the last 12 years to Burnley. Um, and that was back in December of 2020. I don't know if you remember that game, Coach. That was right in the middle of the COVID pandemic, bang in the middle. And they were, I think there they were fans of that game. I think there's only 2,000 fans in attendance. Um, and we lost at home 1-0. And can you remember the sort of... <laughs> I remember the goal scorer. I remember who got sent off as well. Yeah. Granite yeah, again. About the 10 men, uh, a certain player got sent off, not for the first time in his Arsenal career. No. Um, and that game was also instrumental because the goal that Burnley got in that game was an own goal, courtesy of Aubameyang. So yeah. it's funny how things go in swings and roundabouts, isn't it? But yeah. Yeah, man. But in terms of this week, Curtis, what are you saying? I mean, listen, man, Arsenal should win, shouldn't they? Let's be honest, man. The thing, the thing is, Laurie, listen, we should win no matter what. Burnley are poor. Um, I actually think this is the year that Burnley get relegated, which, you know, uh, I Sadden's don't want to be... Sad. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't like being disrespectful about football clubs because, you know, it takes a lot of people to run a club. But, you know, I'm not a big fan of Burnley. I've been up there a couple of times. It's not a nice ground to go to. It's just, mm. I don't know, man, but... Um, I think there's a lot of teams in the championship who are bigger than Burnley who I'd rather see in the Premier League. But I can see a lot of Burnley's fans subscribing. To yeah, Burnley. yeah, they're, yeah, they'll be unsubscribing <laughs> now. But no, yeah. listen, I think a lot will depend on the Liverpool game because, you know, if we lose, then that game just becomes a horrible game that you don't want to play. You're down. You've got Burnley turning up. You know, if you win, you're buzzing. You beat them three or four nil. It, it, a lot can depend on how it goes. So, but like you said, Chris Wood's gone. He was their best, or certainly their best striker. I think that Cornet guy is he's pretty good. But yeah, we should be good. beating Burnley, man. Two three nil. He's at home. At Afcon, isn't it, Corne? Yeah. Oh, is yeah, it Afcon? Afcon. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We should be rolling them. If we beat Liverpool, we should be beating them three or four nil. I can't lie. They're poor this season. Mind you, yeah. didn't we say similar things before we played Forest and we saw what happened there? So, um, yeah, know, that's the only... FA Cup, the magic of the Cup, and anything can happen in the <laughs> Cup. But yeah, Burnley at home should be light work. Well, yeah, we would have thought so, but we probably said the same thing before we played them at home in December 2020 when we lost mm -hmm. to them 1 0. But yeah, I, I mean, listen, what, what's, what are you saying score wise? I'll go 3 0. <laughs> Rah, three nil. <laughs> man, yeah, man. Smoke, smoke them, man. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna go for an also win, obviously, and I think it'll be about at least two clear goals. Um yeah, yeah. as long as we got, you know, the right attitude towards things. I don't want to be you don't want to be disrespecting Burnley and just turning up there thinking that just gonna roll them over. But I mean they yeah, like yeah. you said, Curtis, they're in a poor run of form. They too have got injuries and COVID issues. I mean, because you know. They requested a game get postponed last week. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, come on now. We should beat them. Um, yeah. Drifty, over to you, bro. Uh, you got a game at the weekend, hopefully. Uh, barring <laughs> any false positives. So, who are you taking on? Who's your ops of the week? <laughs> We're not going to leave this down, are we? Um, we've got Crystal Palace at the weekend. It's a tricky game, especially with us not having all our players back. Palace are a bit indifferent in their form this season as well, isn't it? I don't know what you love doing, but they can play brilliantly or they can have a poor game. You don't quite know what Palace is going to turn up. They've been um, like the draw specialists, haven't they? Yeah, they kind of have. Um, but, you know, uh, Vieira is uh, Vieira's doing a good job with the team yes. he has. he's got there. He's, he's changing them around from being defensive as they were under the Hodgson to making them believe in themselves more in attack. A couple yeah. more windows and you never even know, man. He might be able to turn them into a proper mid-table solid they ain't even got to worry about anything type of team. Do you know what I mean? He seems to be doing a good job. So I'm a little bit apprehensive about that game as well. Again, we won't have any of our players back from injury or from AFCON at that time. So it'll be pretty much the only players who are available that played in, in, the, in the Brentford game. So that Palace game, and they're like a false bogey team to us. It's weird. It's like, I call them a bogey team, but then I look at the record and we normally do really well against them. But for some reason, during the game, they always push us to the edge. And that's why it feels like you're playing a bogey team kind of thing. So without the big boys, I am a little worried about playing them, if I'm being honest. Um, I didn't even think we'd win a game in January, to be honest. But then we beat Brentford, thankfully. So we did win a game in January. 
I must say, it's nice to see it's not just me and you, Curtis, who are pessimistic over our club. Yeah, uh, listen, I was expecting Drifty to be on yeah, smoke today. Yeah, Man's acting too, man. like, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, this is, I, this, guys, is kind of, this is not I'm, normal I'm, to hear uh, another club like. But here's the thing: this is why when people say you're pessimistic, just say I'm not pessimistic. I'm realistic. Yes. Like I don't, you get yeah. what I mean? Like obviously, yeah. we love a laugh and a joke, and if and if we were bantering each other, we'll be going in, but. When you're having a proper conversation about football, you have to just sit down and go, well, I can't just say things for the sake of it. We, what, yeah. what am I do, what, what, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't want to come across like an idiot. You know what I mean? Like, I've got to be real. My team at the moment, Palace, is going to be a difficult game. <laughs> it yeah, is. Yeah, you know what I mean? If we, yeah. had Mo, if we had Mo back and we had Sadio back and Thiago was fully fit, fine, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, we should be all right, man. This should be like a 2-3-0. Do you know what I mean? Let's go do this. But that's not the case. Do you know what I mean? So... I'm hearing Mane that. might get signed up for the UFC. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, <laughs> Sadio, yeah, gets kicked, slapped, tripped and whatnot. All game and referees don't do anything to help him. So, you know what? I don't even blame him for being a bit rough. You know what I mean? It is what it is. Man. Mm. But um, I think it'll be a draw, though. I, I, okay. I've, got, I've got a horrible feeling the game with Crystal Palace will be a draw. And because we don't really have that much to play for in the league, as in your pride will keep you going. But as it stands at the moment, we're 11 points behind with a game in hand. Even if we win that game in hand, City aren't dropping eight points in 15 or 16 games. And we stay flawless. Because that's what people always forget. You keep looking at the team that's got to drop the points. And you forget you've got to be perfect while yeah, they're yeah. dropping those points. You drop that's, a that's point. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah. You make you a break. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, when you, yeah. um, it's all right having games in hand, but you've got to get... The points back, you know. You got to win them, and when they drop points, there's a very famous. There's a very famous game out there, man. Possession is nine tenths of the law, so you know. It's city league. Yeah, it's city's league. It is. I wouldn't even be that surprised if the players are slowly starting to mentally put more effort into cup games than they are Premier League games. Well, I think they will. I think they will. I think they will. That's why Thursday's game is such a big game. Yeah. The game is no, up yeah. No, it is. Because so, I mean, subconsciously, they will know that Liverpool players and the manager will know. They won't come out publicly and say, but privately, they will know that, listen, man, the league title is all but gone. Um, the FA Cup, yes, they're still in it in the Champions League. But the um, Carabao Cup is a very winnable tournament because you're in the semi final. If you get past Arsenal, you're into the final against Chelsea. And it's all to play for. So, mm. it's, yeah, it's good, man. It's good. But okay, mm. bro. Um, thanks very much, and for Curtis for coming and you know giving us your thoughts and opinions. Uh, I've really enjoyed the show. Uh, we're going to start winding things up. Drifty, start with you. Tell the people where they can find you on social media, bro. Um, yeah, man. It's uh, my handle on all all, all socials is Drifty underscore ish. Uh, so I S H. Um, and on YouTube, it's just uh, Coppish, Team Coppish. If you put any of those two in, you should be able to find us on, on YouTube, man. So, yeah, man, come over. Even if you just come for a laugh, you know what I mean? Come and come and join us, man. As I said before, man, great content on your team, man. Keep it going. Yeah. Curtis, for the 108th time, I'm going to yeah. ask you to tell the people, <laughs> those who don't know already, you know what I mean? People who are watching the show this week that haven't watched before, tell the people where they can find you on social media, bro. Yeah, man, YouTube, Curtis Shaw TV, daily uploads, watch alongs, you know, we're there all the time, man. And big up Drifty as well, because I do watch your show sometimes as well. And you've got a you've got a good team there, man. Building yeah, a nice right. community yeah, there, right. man. Big up, man. Bless, man. Yeah, man. And last but not least, thanks for everybody for tapping in today, man. Truly appreciate your support. Keep yourselves healthy, well, COVID free. If you are unfortunate that you do have COVID, we wish you a full and speedy recovery. And we hope to see you all next week. We're out. Take care.